Ach, das Mike's Daily Podcast. FMF 2760, 2760 and Mike Matthews at Cafe Anyway somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Mike's Daily Podcast. The last place on earth, it's Mike Matthews and we're singing a song that you've never heard unless you've heard this podcast 2760 times. Then I guess I burned this song into your brain, but that's okay. It's plain. It's not as bad as some other songs that are insane. Maybe if you like, we can make it crazy train. Mike's Daily Podcast. I'm rolling off the rails on a crazy train is what I'm doing. On F- F- episode Mike's 2000. Daily. 760. Podcast. Thank you for listening. Yeah. And it's Mike. And it's all this talk I hear about, oh, the government's going to put a chip inside you. And I'm thinking, ha, 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 ha. That'll never happen. Oh, wow. I sounded very Vincent Price there at the end of Thriller. (laughs) And I'm bald. All I need is a monocle. And I'll be just as scary as the tech billionaire Elon Musk. He said that his brain science startup called Neuralink has implanted a device in a human for the first time. This according to NBC News. They it, they have what was the song in the intro to NBC News? Is it the bum 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 or is that ABC? I can't remember now. Okay. A possible step toward a product that Elon Musk said would allow people to control almost any external device just by thinking. He made the announcement on his platform X and he said the patent, the patient, he's probably going to call this uh, device and the X device. He said that the patient or patient X, whom he did not identify, received an implant. And here's today's podcast picture. On Sunday and is recovering well. (laughs) I hope this subject got a bunch of money because you've now just really messed up your body with an that's like a a, I guess our dogs and cats have little chips in them but this is an implant yes the late great Basil Boxer he had one as well but it has no battery it has no you have to send that uh, what's that scanning device has to bounce off of it before it can read anything So it's not like it's a a live piece of technology From the ways I understand it But He said that uh, The the initial results Showed promising neuron spike detection And he gave no other details on the procedure The patient or the device That the company implanted Scientists for decades have worked on similar ideas for brain-computer interfaces that, if successful, you will travel into the incredible universe. Could one day assist people who are physically disabled, and it could also help change the way people communicate. There was no immediate independent confirmation of this progress. One of its competitors, Precision Neuroscience, implanted its device in a human for the first time a year ago. So, Musk, believe it or not, is a little bit behind. Elon's announcement comes eight months after Neuralink said it had received approval from the Food and Drug Administration to conduct its first in-human clinical study. Then in September, Neuralink said it would begin recruiting patients for the study. They're based in San Francisco. The FDA, which regulates medical devices, would need to approve any consumer product, but they did not immediately respond to a request for a comment. Neuralink has previously said it was building a brain implant called the Link to help patients, including those with severe paralysis. And it would help them use external technologies. Elon said that Neuralink's first product would be called Telepathy. Not X, but Telepathy. He didn't say if it was a new device or a new name for the previously announced device. He's... This company has faced accusations in recent years that it mistreated some of the monkeys the company used in its experiments. 
the U.S. Department of Agriculture said last year. After an investigation, it did not find any violations of animal research rules other than a self-reported 2019 incident where a Neuralink surgeon used an unapproved sealant to close holes drilled into a monkey's skull. Oh. Bands mutations. 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 In this world where everybody's banning everything, I'm going to boycott this. Boycott. I think we should already boycott Neuralink. When you are a man, sometimes you wear stretchy pants. The telepathy product would allow people to control their phone or computer and through those devices, almost any other device, with thought only. Oh, what is this at cafe anyway? 30 p.m. What? With a current temperature of 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh my! There, my. Br- Did you hear that, or was that just in my brain? Did somebody put a chip in me? Oh uh, no! Kathy's corner. Da 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 da. Kathy's corner. Addenda with Kevin. Mike's cassette copy. Everything these days is a TikTok trend. Hey, the orange test, it's a TikTok trend. Hand an orange to your loved one, your partner, and see and tell them, hey, peel this orange for me. And if they do it, they love you. If they don't, then you gotta kick them to the curb. Orange test. All these wonderful TikTok trends. Well, TikTok is testing whether users will put up with every video being an ad and knowing the average TikTok user, I would say yes. I do not use TikTok. I will never put it on my phone. No thank you, China. I will not have you will you will not have that door into my phone that will not be open to you. But TikTok has grabbed the world's attention, averaging 73 million users. American users every month The app knows exactly what you like And now it's rolling out phase two Selling you something with every single video As we go outside a cafe anyway Where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast Somewhere in Podcast Row Valley The last place on earth Somewhere in Ameritapica And the podcast picture will be another one From the fine town of Danville From my lovely lady friend and I's Mike excursion to Danville TikTok is a uh, TikTok shop is what they're calling it. It will identify objects in a video automatically and encourage viewers to find similar items on TikTok. So it has quickly been littered with cheap fake products. <laughs> However, the online marketplace is profitable, raking in four million dollars every day. Whoops. So China's laughing to the bank. And China needs money from what I've heard lately. Things have not been going so good. Only approved. Did you see the podcast picture, by the way? The last podcast? Which we entitled. It was called as my mouse will not move. If I had a chip implanted in my brain that could move the mouse for me. This would be so much easier, but uh, it was called Applications. We were talking about apps. MTV News. You hear it first. So, yes, only approved influencers and brands could link to products on TikTok shop, but now the platform is experimenting with turning every single video into an ad. The feature does not require content creators to even tag products because it's all done automatically. The platform that has been perfectly algorithmically curated to your tastes and that's that's what really scares me is that they know you better than you know yourself now wants to push tiktok shop into every single post this from gizmodo with that info as you know there's a real scary holiday coming up welsh on the world Mike is on it, man. man. Go with no man is gone. We love it, Mike. The Royal Trump tweet decree. As more car companies are looking to get rid of AM radio from vehicles. You know, I mean, people, you know, people get stuck on stupid. You know what I mean? The radio industry is saying, uh uh-uh. This is from the Wall Street Journal. A motley crew of AM radio advocates, including conservative talk show hosts like Hugh Hewitt and federal emergency officials are lobbying Congress to stop car makers from dropping the old medium from new vehicles 
Elon Musk's very own Tesla And then there's Volvo and BMW Are among the companies that have Already stopped providing AM tuners In some models Last year Ford said it would It would Join them as well Until CEO Jim Farley reversed course After speaking with policy leaders They actually changed his mind Lawmakers say most car companies Are non-committal about the future Of AM tuners in vehicles So they want to require them by law To keep making cars with free AM radio (laughs) Yours truly Full disclosure Works for five AM radio stations So I do not want that to go away in cars It shocked me I think that's what's kept radio On top of mind for so many years Was that it was instantly available in your car But if the whole AM radio band Is gone from your car And Elon has said Oh I can't put it in my cars Because the electric uh, motor And electric engine and all this it, it messes with the AM receiver Which is complete bunk Because if you can create a car that runs only on electricity You can come up with a way To receive an AM radio signal Supporters argue It is a critical piece Of the emergency communication network While the automakers say Americans have plenty of other ways Including their phones To receive alerts and information A spring 2023 Nielsen survey Showed AM radio reaches about 78 million Americans every month That is down from nearly 107 million Uh, Just as recently as 2016 And that is one of the earliest periods To which Nielsen has data on that This is Mike's Podcast Picnic Is also Starbucks And their employee One of their employees Got fired for subduing two robbers This is from uh, BizPack Review a former Starbucks employee has sued the chain for firing him and a coworker after they successfully fought back against would-be robbers. Michael Harris, who's 20, was working the drive-thru at a Starbucks in Missouri back in December when two seemingly armed hooligans walked into the restaurant and tried to rob everybody. Holding court with Lady Katie. <laughs> It's, uh, let's see, Starbucks said In situations like this, our training and protocols Guide our partners to comply And de-escalate Not just for their safety, but for the safety of all In the store Wow Instead he was fired The guy was fired Outside a cafe anyway Oh, hey, and we heard back From the guy, the filmmaker Who has a new movie Called Hanky Panky, and he Does in fact he does Want to be on the podcast He is a TV writer and independent filmmaker Also teaches at CSUN Cal State University Northridge And he's created a comedy And uh, he's going to do a screening of it This Saturday At about 3 o'clock in the afternoon At the Let's see if I can click on it correctly The Elite Theater Company That's in Oxnard And I asked It was part of the Central Coast International Film Festival By the way That's this Saturday 345 I said How on earth did you find this podcast? And he said I was searching for podcasts With any ties to Oxnard Ventura And I listened to most of your recent episode And you talked about Exoplanet So I was like Okay Let's do this Because he says the movie that he has is sort of uh, It's got aliens in it So I'm going to try to connect with him And do an interview this week It may not be as far in advance as one would like To promote something that's happening just this weekend But we will see And I had a crazy busy day today Because I, I was planning on maybe calling him But then all of a sudden At the AM radio stations I was talking about Somebody from Comcast The wonderful company known as Comcast Was up on our roof And cut a very important cable That is so necessary for us to have it By cutting it we lost all touch Fabago Things to do do. So for a while we thought the radio stations were off the air But in fact they were on but because the receiver we use to listen, kind of like, you know, 
Let's just say that the clock radio, hopefully you have a clock radio. I got through that. I got into it. <laughs> and it'd be nice if you listened to my AM radio stations. But, you know, I would prefer it if you actually listen to my podcast first. But they they basically severed the, the little receiver that we had. So we couldn't hear if we were actually on the air or not. Nice guy. Nice little kid. Went in there and just cut it all. Did not use his brain. I'll just cut it. <clears throat> this is how he sounded. Oh, I'll just cut everything that I see, and it'll be all right. Everything will be all right. <laughs> this show is clean, pretty much. That was the worst try. I, I think I was trying to go for a Simpsons character with that, but that ain't going to happen anytime. Those voice actors for the Simpsons, they got to be in their 80s by now. Joe, 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 Joe Rilname. Magnification. Somehow they keep going. And somehow I keep going because this is episode 2760 and we're outside a cafe anyway. Somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Look who is here right now. Hello, my gosh. It's my brother. I don't know what they seem to change. Ooh. It's a cartoon. Do you like cartoons? Yes. Do you like Charlie Brown? Yes. Do you like the Roadrunner? No. Yeah, it gets a little frustrating because the coyote never catches the Roadrunner. Aww. I saw an expired coyote on the side of 580 yesterday. (laughs) Boo-hoo. So sad to see. Why aren't people keeping their eyes open? I know it... (sighs) Come on. You've driven at night lately, haven't you? And the newer cars... The headlights are blinding. You could see a a gnat in the middle of the road at night with those headlights. How can you not see a huge coyote? This was a big dog. It wasn't a dog. It was a coyote, but it was a big animal. And uh, they they didn't see it. It's ridiculous. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of coyotes because I own cats and uh, coyotes like to eat cats. And sometimes other dogs, but still, I don't like to see that. Well, look who else is here as well with us. Hello, Dave Mike. This is Valentino, the breaking it thing. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, you need to repeal the California death tax. D. Yeah. ReformCalifornia.org. Do you know that? Oh, gosh, you've been reading the emails that I've gotten from people saying that we need to repeal the California death tax. Okay. I need to look into it. It's the uh, repeal Proposition 19 death tax thing that's going on that I've been getting emails about. But if you would like to call me and tell me what you think about that or other things, here's the phone number. Call Mike at the Cafe Anyway hotline. Area code 510 228-4640. And with more ways to reach out and say hello to me or talk to me, here is A-Frame. But first, not before I tell you all eight songs that are on Boston's debut album. Number one, More Than a Feeling. Number two, Peace of Mind. Number three, Four Play slash Long Time. Number four, Rock and Roll Band. Number five, Smokin'. Number six, Hitch a Ride. Number seven, Something About You. And number eight, Let Me Take You Home Tonight. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now. Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.